Good evening, my fellow sixth grade families. Tonight I come to you with a very special message, and that message is on the importance of reading. As educators, obviously, we value reading at such a high level, but as a person, I value it even greater than that because I feel it's just one of the most amazing things that I do and one of the most amazing things that these students can do as well. Except every year, I always find it a struggle to get that message across. How do I get these students excited about reading? And it takes me back to my fifth, sixth, seventh grade years because, I'll be honest, I hated to read. I never understood how these kids or how my parents or how, how they could sit there and just read this book for so long. You know, I think, isn't that driving you crazy? Aren't, aren't you bored just turning those pages like that? And it wasn't until I found a great book that allowed me to finish from start to finish and really think to myself, what a great book that was. But it wasn't easy. It took me a while to get through it, and I realized that it's because it takes practice just like anything else before you finally have those skills to be a good reader. And I tried to explain that to the students. In fact, the analogy I used is running. Obviously, running is great for you. It gets you in great shape, adds years to your life, makes you feel like a million bucks. However, it's not easy to get started. You see people run and you think, I can't do that. They're running. That's, I mean, I'm not in shape for that. And then the first time you give it a try, you, you try to run, but then you're out of breath and you say, that, that's just not for me. It's not until you continually, continuously do it that you realize, I'm getting better at this. Wow, I can actually run. And before you know it, you feel so great and you never want to stop running. It's the same thing with reading. But we got to get these kids started on that. So I thought, how do I get that message across? How do I get them excited about that? Because the statistics are overwhelming, which I'll quickly show you here. Take a look at this. If a student reads two minutes per day, that's 51,000 years words per year. It's a lot of words, what's great, but on average, they're scoring in the 10th percentile across the board in testing. Now take 20 minutes a day. If a student reads for 20 minutes a day, they're reading 1.2 million words per year, scoring in the 70th percentile. Think of that. Think of the difference between these two students. 1.2 million words, that's that many more vocabulary words, that's so much more creativity, so many more stories, so much more information that they learned compared to this student. But check this out. This is where I try to get our students to be excited about 40 minutes a day 2.4 million words per year scoring in the 90th percentile on average. What a difference that makes. This is the area where we want your students, my students to be. This is where they're exposed to that vocabulary. This is where they're exposed to all the great works of some of the great people in our lives. This is where they're exposed to amazing stories and builds that creativity and just opens up an entire world of wonder and knowledge for the students. So how do we get them there? I'm going to continue to try and give them suggestions on great books, but I thought this year I'm going to give them a challenge. I'll give them a challenge, and then maybe as they get started, they'll slowly start to get better and realize just how much they love it. So the challenge I gave the students this year, if you're ready for this, is for them by January 1st of 2020 to collectively have read 60,000 pages. 60. Pages. That's right, 60,000 pages by January 1st, and they can do it. We did the math at 33 students on an average of 20 pages per day, five days a week. By January 1st, we'd be close. Not quite there. They're going to have to pick up a little bit of extra slack along the way, maybe read a Saturday or two along the way, maybe read a couple of extra pages if they really want to hit that 60,000 mark. But I know that they can do it. I'm going to need your help on this um, because obviously, well, in the great words of our, our former president, Ronald Reagan, he says, trust but verify. So I trust the students but I'd like to verify. So they'll be taking home a reading log, a very simple reading log that keeps track of their pages. And I'd like you as parents to kind of keep that encouragement going. Um, keep them reminded about the reading to that at home. Help them find great things that they love to read. Maybe even read with them. But I'll need you to sign off that they've read those certain number of pages so we can add it to our, our chart, our thermometer chart, to really keep track of just how far we're doing on this challenge. 
Now, on top of that, they'll be taking AR quizzes in class, and all of this is going to help me with that verify portion of, of this trust. But, as with any challenge, if the students are able to hit this challenge, they've got to be rewarded with something great. I want them to really go after it, so I allow them to collectively come to an idea on what we can do as a great prize if they reach this incredible goal. And what they decided to do is if they hit 60,000, we've agreed that we will go do some kind of an epic after-school off-campus party where we can all meet up and just have an amazing time. Right now, a lot of them are leaning towards us possibly doing a day playing laser tag or even possibly going to one of those trampoline parks. But um, I will work my magic to make sure that we're able to do that as a class. However, I want them to work their magic to reach the 60,000 pages and with your help, we can get this done. Now, before I go, I want to give one suggestion for a great book. And this week's suggestion is a book called Doll Bones. Might not be for everybody. However, this is, it's a fantastic book. Perfect for this time of year where we have Halloween and sort of that creepy fall time coming up. Really quickly, it's about a group of friends that is in their younger age, they would uh, do this make-believe game. And as part of the make-believe game, they had this sort of creepy bone china doll that was kept in this little case. And that, that was like the queen who would rule over their, their make-believe. But then as they got older and stopped playing, they started to have dreams. And they weren't sure if they were dreams about this, this bone china doll starting to talk to them about where it came from and its super haunted past and gives them orders to to follow a quest which they obviously end up going and doing super creepy book but very exciting really about great friendship fantastic book it's a newberry honor award winner which means it was one of the best books at the time for kids again it's a book called doll bones your student might be interested in something else i will continue to try to give them those suggestions but we need your help help them to stay motivated i will do my part 60,000 pages by January 1st, and together we can do it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night. I'll be back with more videos throughout the year.